If you want your website build with Bricks Builder to be really efficient and methodical, you want to think about your global settings, your page size, your colors, your fonts. And we're going to go over that right now. Now to do that, we are going to create a header template and I'll talk about that. But in a future video, we will then go and do some work on the header template. So this is just about your settings. We're using Bricks 1.5.4. It is a theme. It's not a plugin. That is what is so beautiful about it. Let's very quickly go over where you're gonna do some of your settings. Now on the left hand side, when you go over to bricks over here, you will have your settings that you can go through. They're very basic. You don't need to worry too much about them if I'm really honest, but the one key one is custom fonts. Here's where you are gonna preload your fonts. If you do not preload your website, when it renders the pages, it will be fetching it. And if you've gone and put in Google fonts or whatever, it's fetching it. You don't want that. It can add a tiny bit of a delay that will affect your page speed insight score. So what you wanna do is had, hit add new, give it a title, and then go and pick your fonts. Now, if I just go back to the ones that I've already done, like with Lato, if I hit edit, I went and added in five different variations, thin, light, normal, bold, and black. You can see it over there. I've got them from the Google Fonts website for free, and then I've installed them. Um, they do sit in my media library, by the way, as well. But it is super, super good to do, and I strongly recommend you do this. The second thing you need to think about is templates, okay? So when you're building a website, don't create a header, say for a 100-page website, and repeat it over and over again where you're building it from scratch. Create a header template and set the display condition to be visible on every page or certain pages, okay? And I strongly recommend you do that. We are going to create that but we're not working on the header template. We're just gonna go through, once we've now done it and we're now inside of Bricks, here are some of the settings you do need to think about. So I'm very gonna quickly just create a header template. Add new, I'm gonna give it a title, and on the right-hand side, you will get to select the template type. Now, you will see header, footer, and single. These are the ones I tend to use the most. If I've got an archive page for my posts, I'll, I'll use the archive. You won't see WooCommerce pages on here though, because we haven't got WooCommerce installed. The minute you add WooCommerce, more templates will become visible to you. We're just gonna go with header for now, hit publish, and then we're gonna hit edit with bricks. Very first thing you're gonna say is that is a very narrow page. Don't be fooled by that. That's just because at the moment it is showing as a 73% scale. So it's not 100%. And also we haven't gone and set the page size. If you do go over here, right, uh, can you see the little chevron there? If I click that, that is now expanded to be a hundred percent. I can also bring it back, move my mouse over so I get the double arrow and I can start to shrink and minimize that. And as I do that over here, the percentage would change as well. So you do have a bit of flexibility over that. And of course, depending on the size of your monitor as well, I'm on a MacBook Air. Ding! But, you know, so my size isn't massively big at the moment. The cog in the top left is your settings. Let's go through these one by one. We're going to go to the theme style. Now, you'll notice it already says test style here. That's because I already had one that I'd already built for a different video in here. So if I've gone and set any typography, any colors, the size of the page, they are visible there. What I really like about that is that you could create separate styles and you might decide, actually, we're going to do that style instead of this style and it brings everything through in one go. So if your customer is or your client is a little bit like, well, do I wanna go for this style or that style? You can switch it out on the get-go, okay? Um, what we're gonna do though is just completely clear that out, and we are now gonna create a new style. So we're gonna click Create, and I'm gonna give this a style name. So normally, when you first come in, this is probably what you're gonna see, okay? Give it a name. We'll call it Bricks Intro 101, and then we hit Create, and we now have everything that I had before, but this time now, I no longer have my other style. Well, sorry, make a mistake. The other style is there and I can literally switch it out. Now watch what happens here. Can you see these yellow dots? That means I've applied some style, some setting to it. If I now go and click Bricks Intro, the yellows disappear because I have not set anything. That again is really, really cool. Imagine like someone gives you a website to work on with Bricks and you're going, oh, what settings do I need to change or double check what they've got? Really, really easy and simple. I can now see, right, they've got something in typography. Right, let's go in and have a look at what they've done there. Let's just switch that back over to be Bricks Intro. You can change the name if you want as well, okay, if you decide you don't like that. Anyway, we'll leave it as that. The very first thing we're going to do is decide, well, this style, where is it applied? Is this applied 
across the entire website or only particular pages, I'm going to go and hit a condition, hit the plus sign, and I'm going to say that this is on the entire website. Again, what did I just say to you about styles? You could have five styles set up, and you have one specifically for the front page or for the posts or for the search results. You can see the items over there. Or is it going to be for the entire site? We're just going to go with the entire website for now. You can also exclude items as well, but I'm going to keep this pretty damn simple. So there we go. We have a yellow dot for conditions. That is now applied. Let's go to general. What is your website going to be like in effect? You know, is it going to be a boxed maybe of a 900, 800? Now, please bear in mind, I would say just go for wide. And when you then add in your containers, then you can actually resize them in terms of how big are they going to be on the page? Are they going to be full width or are they going to sit more in the center or something like that? So I'm just going to go with wide at the moment. You can also set your background and pick a color. Um, that's entirely up to you. I'm going to leave it as just plain at the moment because I will start to do that with my individual sections as I work through the website. That being said, there is no harm in doing that. The only drawback at the moment, though, is if I go here and I pick that palette or the dropper and I'm now going to start to pick a color, um, there is already a color in there, but I don't have a preset palette at the moment. So I'm going to say, let's just leave that blank for now. And I'm not going to do anything. Um, by the way, you can do your light box colors as well. Um, so when you click an image and it expands out for you, you can control the background color for that. Again, a nice little neat feature, but I'm not overly fussed about that at the moment. So the main thing for general is it is a wide website. Let's now go over to colors. Now there are pros and cons as to setting your colors here. So let's say for the primary color, we go with a red and you've used that color for the background color of your section or container, or you've gone and used it as the font color for your headline or text or your button color as well. Your client then says, I want to use blue instead. I don't want red, I want blue. Fine, you come into here and you change this color to be blue and it will dig, 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 change it wherever you've used it. So that's really, really good. Or you could just set a color palette as well. Now for simplicity, I'm just going to create a color palette so I can pick and choose what I want to use on the fly. If I click over here, the default uh, setting basically gives you a palette like that. Pretty simple and easy. What you can do for is go down here, hit the plus sign and create your own palettes. Let's give this a name and I'm going to click create. Let's add some colors to our palette. I'm going to go over here and I'm going to type in FF0050. It's one of my favorite red colors, the one from Web Squadron. And once you've got that color, you do have to hit save. That is now added to the palette. OK, let me go and add in some more colors. After that, what if you don't want some of those colors or you want to rearrange them? Over here, you have the option to edit. Now, when you do that, this yellow color here, I can go over and I can delete. And after confirming, it will now be deleted and you can add in another one again. You can also do is if you put your finger <laughs> of your mouse over the actual circle, you can lift it and rearrange the items like so. That's a really simple way of adding in your color palette. Now, that being said, though, even though I've gone and created the palette, I could at any time go back over here and go, right, my palette now is going to be determined by the colors. So even though I've said like, well, you know, we're not going to use this, we're going to create a palette. I can go over here now, ensure that I'm on my um, the right palette uh, name that you picked down here, which we called new. And I can go in and go, right, OK, they're the colors we're going to go for the primary, secondary color, etc. So create your palette and then use the colors from that. That is a really good thing to do. There are loads more options down here where you can actually start to define um, the individual widgets as well. So like things like the button, you could go in and start to go, right, what is the style? What is the background color? What's the border looking like? You can do all of that right now. So every time you add in a button, it will always have a consistent style. I'm not gonna do those for the moment, because I will come back to revisit them as I'm building out my website. But what the one thing we will definitely touch is the typography, because I want to make sure that is consistent. So let's go in. Now, here's where you can start to decide on, are you going to have um, a consistent style for your heading one, your heading two, your header three? So it might be you say Lato bold, maybe for heading one. Then you might go for Lato Medium for Heading 2, etc, etc. Or you could just apply a single family across the board. You're not going to set the weighting of it or anything like that. And you might do that on the fly. 
So rather than doing it across the board, I'm gonna go in and I am just going to now decide what is my size. Now, you will notice it says 62.5%. That's because the root HTML for most fonts, okay, if you think about it in terms of one REM, and please don't let this blow your mind up, one REM is equal to 16 pixel. By having 62.5% already defaulted into there, that now says that your unit is actually 10 pixel. And when you start to think about things in tens, it's easier to understand. What do I mean by that? If you now set your font to be REM1, it is 10 pixel. If I go REM1.5, that is 15 pixel. REM2 is 20 pixel. REM1.2 is 12 pixel. Whereas if you did REM1.2 with the old root HTML, then that would be 1.2 times, well, 102, no, 120% times 16 pixel. A bit of mathematics and calculators got to come out now. So this keeps things really, really simple. And all I'm going to do over here is just say for the body, I want, if we just scroll down here, I'm not going to set the color. I'm not going to set the size. All I'm going to do is pick our family. And when I scroll down over here, you can now see my custom font, Lato. That is all I'm going to do. I'm not going to set the height. I'm not going to set the spacing. Once you know what you're doing, you may want to come back and revisit this to ensure it is consistent across the board. OK, but I'm just going to do that for now. That's my body and all headings. Again, I'm just going to go down to, well, it's already done it in a way. you got a lasso there. It has put it as 700. You can modify that if you want. I'm going to leave that for now. That's fine. The only other thing I'll mention about typography is that you can define your margins as well. So if your headings are always going to have, say, a 20 pixel margin, maybe uh, from the top, the bottom, left and right, you could go in here and do that as well. I'm going to leave those as zero again. Um, and by the way, you can link them. So if I do 20 there, it does it across the board. OK, again, that is something you might want to think about when you're doing your actual layouts and how it's going to look. But I'm going to keep it really simple. As far as settings go, okay, if we go to theme styles, okay, I am happy with just that. That is all saved. I don't know if I have it save anywhere, anything like that. It's all stored in the memory here. It's all done and dusted. If we now go back to settings over here, we now have page settings. Now, when it comes to custom code, if you're going to add in any custom CSS, depending on, you know, you might be using other tools like code snippets or anything as well, you can just add it in here. You can add in custom CSS as well into each individual widget. So don't worry about where you put that in. Um, when it comes to social media, you know, um, one of the common problems is when people share a link and the image is like the logo or the favicon and they go, huh, that's not what that's not the image I want to be showing. I want to show something else. Go and set that in then. Go and ensure you've got your title in as well. Um, this is really handy for social media purposes, OK? And when you go to the general for the page settings, you're kind of almost revisiting stuff you've already done before. It's a wide layout. We're not going to be applying any background color. You can set in some margin, though, you know, some space, uh, etc. However, again, I'm leaving that all pretty clean. From the get go, you want to make sure you do that before you build the header, the sections, the hero banner, anything in your website, OK? because now you are in a better place to go forwards. If there's anything I've missed, please drop it in the comments. Make sure you come back because we're now gonna start working on the header in the next video. I'm Imran Web Squadron. Like, subscribe, share, and follow. I'll see you. Never break, always fight, never quit. Do it right, play the game, win it life. Have no shame, there's no time. Feel the pain, let the grind. I could change in my mind. Pick a lane, commit and climb. The only way to win it life. I never miss that fact. Taking big swings, bitch, ham.